Hey guys, my name is Molly Heyer and I am the owner of M Heyer Design and today you get to join me while I show you how to paint a barrel head. So I'm going to go through the steps of it as well as for you to first hand get to see how the whole process works. I'm also going to try to give you some tips on things that I do when I do my painting and hopefully we will create a masterpiece. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to be placing the stencil. And as you can see, the barrel head has already been prepped and ready to go, so it's sanded down. The edges are cleaned off, so all it needs is the stencil to be placed on it. As much as I'd like to think that I can eyeball this, I highly recommend that you uh, use a tape measure because sometimes you think it looks like it's centered or you think it's where it needs to be and it's not and then you paint the whole thing and you are very disappointed when you have to sand it down and redo it. I've done that many times. So I usually try to find like the middle point and measure it and then I go across to that same middle point and as I can see I need to be moving this over a little bit. So I just shift it over and then measure the top points. And always make sure that the points when you're measuring them that it's the same part of the barrel because clearly it's rounded and you know different points are going to be different lengths so you want to be consistent all the way through. Okay, so we have got part one done. And then this is the inner part of it. It'll make a lot more sense when we're done of what exactly I'm going to be creating today, so just bear with me. So I am placing the second part down. And make sure that when you are putting the stencil down to really press down on every little point and make sure that it really has stick to the barrel because that will prevent any bleeding when you are doing the painting. So now the lovely vowel inserts. These two can be a little bit tricky. They like to pop up. They have a mind of their own. So just be aware when you are painting that they might move. So make sure to maybe put your finger on them when you're painting or push them down right before you are about to paint. Okay, so now that we have the stencil down, you get to choose your paint. I usually try to choose a brush that is pretty similar to the width of what I'm going to be painting. So this one is gonna be Outline of Kentucky. So I'll need something that's a little bit on the smaller side, but not a tiny brush, because I don't want this to take forever. So the biggest tip that I give to anyone that uh, attends one of my classes when they are painting that less is more when it comes to paint. You really do not need that much paint on your brush when you're painting and it's better to do several layers than try to slop it all on at once. Not only does it have a chance of bleeding, but it also builds up against the wall of the stencil and you have a uneven texture when you pull the stencil off. So I take the paint, I dab it onto a um, paper towel and then I start painting. With chalk paint, it usually dries very, very quickly, so I, I kind of throw out the rule of if it's eight to 10 seconds and it still looks like it's wet, you probably have too much paint. And if that is the case, either um, dab it with a paper towel or get a dry brush that doesn't have any paint on it and go back at that spot and just try to like spread it around. And when you're working with words that might be a little bit smaller or they might have inserts, Try to put your fingers down on that insert. It just reassures it and it makes sure it doesn't move when you are painting. And when I paint, I try to go up and down. Um, these are placed with the grain, so that helps to get the paint into the grain. And I try not to press too much into the stencil edge, but it's very important that you get all the way to that edge or when you pull off the stencil, it's gonna look a little bit um, jagged or uneven and you wanna have that nice smooth line. So I kind of work with the stencil and go back and forth 
try to get a little bit in those grooves. But like I said before, it's, it's more important to do several layers than try to get it all at once. If there's like spaces, because you know, these are barrel heads, they're not perfect. You know, there's pretty deep grain in them. You might not fill all of those spots and that's okay because when we put the Danish oil on it, which is going to bring out the color of the barrel as well as seal the paint, that'll fill in in those places so you don't really have to worry about getting those. The most important part of it is that these edges need to be taken care of. So I'm going to go ahead and peel off my stencil. This is by far my favorite part in the process because most people are blown away when they make these in my classes and can't believe that they actually created something like this. And then I get to say, I told you so. And that's always fun for me to see how happy that they are. So I peeled it off and I feel like it looks pretty good. And then I go after that and try to get these little stencil inserts. If you do get to the point where you peel it off and you realize that there was some bleeding, that's what I use the sandpaper for. This is a 220 grit sandpaper, so it's a pretty fine sandpaper. And I'll take it and I bend it like this so I have a little bit of a straight edge. And then I go to wherever that point was and you can just go back and forth and touch it up. And now we are on to the um, final stage of it. So this stage is putting the Danish oil on it and like I said before, the color is going to bring out the warmth of the barrel and the colors of the barrel as well as seal the chalk paint. So this is where I have a foam brush. The color that I use is a medium walnut. I think that that gives it color without completely changing the color of the barrel. So I take my sponge brush, I dip it into the Danish oil and you just completely cover the entire barrel over the chalk paint, on the sides. It doesn't have to be a super thick layer, but it needs to cover every part of it. Okay, it looks like we got majority of the barrel covered. At this point, I usually leave it on for a couple of minutes and let it really soak in there. The longer that you leave it on, the darker it's going to get, but it gets to the point that if you leave it on for too long, it's going to get sticky on top and you're not gonna want that. So I think time-wise, I aim for about five minutes, but it's good to just watch over it and make that judgment call. So at this point, I think that the Danish oil has really uh, absorbed into the wood. So I take a um, paper towel and I just wipe it all the way down. I usually do it with the grain, but the key to all of this is to make sure that you get all of the stain off of it. Cause like I said before, if it sits on there too long, it gets gunky. Nobody wants that. And don't be afraid to truly wipe it all the way. I mean, the paint's not going anywhere. The oil has sealed it um, onto the barrel. Make sure you get the sides. I shift my paper towel around just to get that dry side. Try to use as much of it as possible. So this is the end result. I offer these for kits that people would like to take at home. I provide all the supplies for it, everything that you see here today. Or you can join me on one of my different options for paint classes. I team up with local businesses. And the best way to find out about my upcoming events is going to my website, which is mhirewoodwork.com. So I hope to see you at my next class. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me.